carrying on with my tool storage, I'd said I was going to mount a, or I thought I was going to mount a tower on the top of my toolbox back here. I went down and was digging through the uh, through the surplus stuff at the at the uh, steel store, and I was looking for something with about four inch tubing. And what my plan was was I wanted a, a, a post about thirty six inches high, which I felt would give me plenty of height there for anything I wanted to store. And I wanted it to be kind of universal, so I thought I was going to drill it with some sort of a drill. With some sort of a hole pattern and tap it so I can just bolt things to it and that's actually what I've done I came up with uh, two pieces actually of four inch square tubing and this is three eighths wall which is way overkill but like I say it's what they had there and uh, they had two pieces one of them was 27 inches long and this one's a little over 13 I think so I end up with something in that 40 inch range yeah this one's about a little over 30, 12 and three quarters um, so I end up with something just about 40 inches tall, and I've already taken the other one and drilled it. I've got to go back and clean it up and tap it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel the edges and I'm going to weld them together. I, I thought for this application it'll be just perfect. It's going to be perfect. Anyway, what I ended up and did is I drilled a 2 inch hole pattern. So it's 2 inches apart and 2 inches up and down too, so I've got a full pattern. Um, this is a bottom piece, now the, the top piece ended an inch from the uh, from the edge this one I'm gonna start an inch so I maintain that two inch spacing and then I'm only gonna run about three sets of holes six on each side and I've drilled them all the way around so I've got a boatload of holes to tap but nonetheless that's what I'm doing the setup is I took a just a piece of, of scrap square tubing I had and bolted it down to the table and I indexed it as a straight edge so I ran a dial indicator on indexed it up and then my uh, Square tubing, like I say, I've already done the, the longer piece, and I'm just going to quickly do this last piece. I've uh, raised it up on a couple of pieces of one inch thick rectangular tubing because it's uh, with the power feed assembly on the, the x axis. Why, if you try and run it that way, why, if it was on the table, it runs into that. So you have to raise it up to clear. So that's why I've raised it up. Um, the paper's just because I had a little bit of rusty piece that I was using as a straight edge. I didn't really want to to uh, clamp that rusty piece down onto the onto the uh, directly onto the table so I just laid some paper down there and um, it's gonna hold fine all we're doing is drilling holes so that's pretty much the the layout I'm spacing everything off of the digital readout I've got it setting down here on the toolbox itself and um, we're just punching holes tap size holes for quarter twenties and you know, I'll never use even uh, probably even a quarter of the holes that are in here, but where exactly did I want to drill them? So we just drilled a pattern, it's kind of a universal setup, and uh, even though I'm spending more time drilling and tapping holes right now, why in the long run, why it makes it a little more, a little more easier, I don't have to worry about it. Here's my little tool tower. Ah, it's got body filler on it, so it looks kind of kind of ugly. I'll let it cure overnight and sand it down, and then we'll get some paint on it. I've got some dark green paint that probably won't match anything else, but at least we'll get her going. This is what I've done. I've got the, my two pieces welded together, and I put it on a base plate down here, and it bolts the top of my little toolbox. Now I may have to go back and put a piece of you know, half or three quarter inch plywood underneath my stainless steel just to give it a little bit more support. It's got a little bit of flex to it, but it's really not bad. We'll see how it how it works out. But I did go ahead and drill it on a two inch bolt pattern. So all of the adapters that I build to it, like to hang my digital readout, I'll use probably those four holes on the front. Just build me a little plate, drill it, and then I'll weld my, uh, probably just for this two pieces of angle iron to it to support my support my digital readout. This is my digital readout arm. I turned little plugs on either end, so we'll just put a little put a little nylon uh, washer on either side and pinch it between two pieces of angle iron. I'll put I'll use iron or steel on the uh, on the post here, so I can take weld it up to the backing plate, and then we'll just run a through bolt. Got a quarter inch hole through it, which should be plenty, and we'll pinch down on those nylon washers, and that'll give us our friction. And we've got one for each end. I've got to adjust the length of this. 
but it'll mount right up there, something similar to that, so that it can pivot side to side, and the digital readout will have the same thing, except I'll do aluminum brackets on it, because it'll mount on the other end, and I'll have to figure out length. This is, I think, a little bit too long, but I want it in a position where it's out far enough if I'm standing at the other end of the table where I can still easily see the digital readout and reach it. So it's going to set up here someplace, probably be just a little bit longer than the front of the mill. It's probably about where it'll go to. And then that'll uh, take care of that. Now I'm probably, on the arms, I'm probably going to powder coat this up with my ugly old green that doesn't match, the same as on the hand wheels. Uh, for my end caps and any little aluminum brackets, I've got some green dye coming, so I'll, uh, I'll anodize these and uh, anodize them green so they're some sort of a rainbow green in the, in the setup we've got going here. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. So hopefully you find it a little bit interesting. I'm going to go in and edit this video and have some dinner, and I'll put this out in the weekend, or over the weekend, while, like I say, we'll get this sanded down in the morning and painted up and uh, permanently bolted on there, hopefully permanently bolted on there unless we have to support it, and then we'll start building accessories for it. So we'll finish up the, the digital readout mounts and uh, then start building little accessories to, to hang stuff on. So that's where we're at. One other thing is I had somebody ask me about what I decided on for a rotary table for this size mill and I still haven't come up with the perfect solution I don't know what I'm gonna buy or build for a rotary table on this um, but I think probably in that five inch you know six is about the max just as a comparison this is a super spacer that I acquired when I was acquiring some of my other stuff. Now this is an 8 inch super spacer and by comparison it is huge. Um, way too big for this mill. I actually do not have a piece of equipment big enough to really utilize this super spacer with the exception of the um, planer. But just for comparison, let me throw it up over here. This is way more than I want to be lugging around very much. But just for comparison, there's an 8 inch super spacer. And it's all I can do to muscle it around. And it's way too big. I'm not even going to bother to lift it up on the mill table. Um, so that's 8 inch by comparison. 6 inch is only going to be 2 inches smaller. And um, I think realistically for this size mill drill or mill, why a about a five inch is about right for it. I think maybe I've uh, I've looked at some four inch stuff, and I almost think four inch is a little bit too small. Four inch will probably handle ninety nine point nine percent of everything that I ever want to rotate on this mill table. Um, but it seems like four inch is still a little bit small. It's almost in the in the um, toy machinist type parts you know it doesn't uh, it's uh, doesn't seem like it's quite big enough but uh, like I say it would probably work fine but I think for a for a uh, rotary table probably about a five inch is just about ideal I think so all right one other little thing that I've discovered about this mill that um, you know we, we talk about these being less expensive machines and People talk that they're cutting corners on deburring, you know, some machining operations and things like that. Where I'm seeing cost cutting or corner cutting on these machines, just little niceties that we might find or, or things that get overlooked on these machines that wouldn't normally be overlooked on, on bigger machines. perfect example of this is the power feed. Now... I've talked about power feeds before and how I kind of feel about them because I had one on the other mill and really didn't utilize it. I've been trying to utilize this one more and I think it's going to work out fine for me. I'm going to like having it on this mill and since I'm at least at this point not planning on running at CNC or anything, why it is a little bit of a time saver. I find I use it more for wrapping the table than I do for actual machining with the, with the power feed, although I am trying to use it for that. But one of the things that it's really lacking on in the way it's thought out and the power feed that I had on the other machine years ago would have been virtually the same power feed it's got the same problem with it 
and it's your little Gitz Oilers on here. You've still got your Gitz Oiler on the, on the uh, little bearing support that goes on this end of the lead screw, and it's got a Gitz Oiler in there. Well, there's no way at all that you can ever access that Gitz Oiler the way this is set up. It's completely covered by the, and it's covered close enough that you wouldn't be able to get a small headed oiler in there or anything, you know, a flexible, there's just no way you could get to it. So consequently, if you don't address that white, that's a, that's a wear point that's never going to get lubed, basically. My solution to that, and I haven't done it yet, and I will here before too long, is I'm quite simply just going to bore a hole through the bracket. Um, it's not so much the uh, main mounting portion of the, the power feed assembly, it's the actual angle bracket or or U-shaped bracket that straddles the, the cutout on the table and goes over. So I think it probably does intersect the, the uh, power feed too, but it also interferes or it intersects with the, with the bracket that goes over the top. So at some point in the not too distant future, you're going to see me set this all up on the, on the table and we're going to bore a hole through there. And we'll, then we'll have to dedicate a, a regular little oil spigot to it with a, with a 90 degree oiler in there so we can oil that gets. The other place that I think it's kind of lacking is on the V-ways on the upright column to raise and lower the head. Now that's not a high movement area but from what I found so far there's no gets oiler in there or any way to oil that at all so at some point in time it will get a whether it be a grease for zert we inject grease in there um, from both side on both sides of the head, um, if we just put gets oilers in there and periodically squirt a little bit of oil in there, it doesn't take a whole lot because, like I say, it's not a high movement area at all in a manual mill configuration. But um, it is going to see quite a bit of up and down movement, and there needs to be some, I think, some better way to lube it rather than just squirting a little oil on the top and letting it run all the way down through. So, anyway, those are just a little observations I've made so far. Height-wise, we were talking about table height yesterday. So for table height, I've gone right to 41 inches. I've got uh, two 4x4s crisscrossed down at the bottom. You know, we've got them stacked, so we've added added uh, 7 inches that we have uh, cribbed this mill up on. Table height on the other mill is just about 44 inches. I've always been comfortable working at that mill, but that's where it's been forever so um, I kind of I actually like that height but I think the 41 inches here gives me a, a good working height I think I can live with this um, you know I don't want to lean over at all controls are just about where they probably need to be and um, I think maybe the this is the height I'm going to leave it at which is 41 inches um, you know, it wouldn't bother me to go a little bit taller, but by the same token, then when you start running the head on up, why then I'm reaching a fair amount up here to, to run the drawbar. Now that's going to probably become a non-issue because I'm going to mount the power drawbar on there here before too long. But uh, that's something to consider if you're running a if you're running a manual drawbar because if you're getting it up there, why you're reaching a little bit. Um, for me, I'm a little short guy. You know, I'm about five six, so you can kind of take that into into account when you're figuring machine height. So. Anyway, food for thought. Got any comments or suggestions? Leave them in the comment section for me below. You guys have a good weekend, and as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.